our second question we are given the data regarding the temperature of the day and the number of people at the beach so here this is the temperature of the day in kelvin 293 kelvin 295 kelvin and so on and this is the number of people who visited the beach on that day now we are supposed to determine the sample correlation coefficient between these two variables and at the end of it we are supposed to interpret the result now let's see how this is supposed to be done we want the sample correlation coefficient which we know the formula is sxy by sx into sy and here what we mean by these terms this is the sample covariance between these two variables whereas sx and sy are independently the sample standard deviations of these two variables so this means that we have to calculate the sample covariance and calculate the sample standard deviation separately so let's begin with the standard deviations this is the temperature data and we first need the mean for it the mean is x bar is total sum of observations which is 1 to 8 sigma i goes from 1 to 8 xi divided by 8 because there are 8 observations overall 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 and now for the sum we know that all these values are fairly close to 300 so let us see how much different from 300 so this is essentially 300 minus 7 this is 300 minus 5 this is 300 minus 1 this is 300 plus 0 this is 300 plus 5 this is 300 minus 3 again this is plus 8 and this is plus 12 and there are 8 300s that we are considering so that will give us 2400 plus the sum of these values now this is easy to calculate so minus 7 minus 5 minus 1 is minus 13 plus 5 is minus 8 minus 3 is minus 11 plus 8 is minus 3 plus 12 is plus 9 so we'll get 2400 plus 9 divided by 8 and that is essentially 2409 by 8 which gives us 301.125 so this is the mean for the temperature and now for standard deviation we need to look at the deviation of each data point with respect to this mean and that let us calculate it on the side here this is going to be 301.125 minus 293 which is 8.125 then that will make this 6.125 and this is going to be 2.125 this is 1.125 this is then 3.875 this would be 4.125 and this is 6.875 then that would be this would be 10.875 obviously i am ignoring the signs if we are particular about the signs then x bar minus xi this will be positive, 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 positive. This is negative. This is again positive. This is negative, and this is negative. But we are not interested in the signs because we are going to square them and then do the division. So, for sample standard deviation, I am going to do the sum of all these deviations, the square x bar minus xi, the whole square, divided by n minus 1 is 7 the whole square root 
this requires considerable calculation i will not show that in the tutorial but if you have calculators you can do it and verify for yourself what we get at the end of the calculation is 306.875 divided by 7 the whole under root and that is essentially root of 43.839.2857 and that is roughly 6.621. So this is our sample standard deviation for the x variable, for the temperature variable. So this is Sx. Now let's calculate Sy. Now for the y variable, again we have to calculate the mean, the y bar which is sigma again i goes from 1 to 8 yi, the whole divided by 8. So some would be giving us 1500 plus 1300 is 2800 plus 1150 would be 3950 plus 800 would give us 4750 plus 500 would give us 5250 plus 1200 would give us 6450 plus 456 would give us 6906 plus 200 gives us 7106. So this is equal to 7106 7, divided by 8, which comes out to be 888.25. Now once again, let us calculate the deviations of each data point from the mean. I am again using the absolute values only. So this value 1500 minus 888.25 will give us 611.75 then this next one will give us 200 lesser 411.75 and the next one will give us 150 further lesser which is 261.75 and this one is 88.25 and this one is going to be 388.25 and this one is going to be 311.75 and this is 432.25 and the last one is 688.25 so we have pretty large numbers again we are going to need a calculator for this anyway we are calculating the Sy, which is a sample standard deviation for this variable, which is going to be the square root of sigma i goes from 1 to 8 by i minus y bar the whole square divided by n minus 1, which is 7 in our case. So that sum of the squares, if we calculate it, we get 1, 5, 28531.5 the whole divided by 7 and this is equal to square root of 218361.643 which comes out to be roughly 467.291 so this is our sy Now for the sample covariance, we are going to use these deviations and uh, the sign matters now. What is the sample covariance formula? The sample covariance formula is Sxy, which is a sample covariance, is equal to sigma i goes from 1 to 8, xi minus x bar into yi minus y bar. So every respective deviation the whole divided by n minus 1 which is 7. So the signs are of importance here. xi minus x bar is what we are looking at. Here xi is lesser than x bar. So this is negative. This is also negative. This is also negative. This is also negative. This is positive. This is again negative. 
this is positive and this is positive. So we have 3 positive and 5 negative. Whereas over here, 888.25 is the mean. So 1500 is definitely greater. This is positive. This is also positive. This is also positive. This would be negative. This is also negative. This is positive. Then this is also negative. This is also negative. Here we have 4 positive and 4 negative. Now we need to calculate these products respectively. If we put this down, this is what it will look like. A fairly elaborate and long calculation is required. We have minus 8.125 into 611.75 plus this whole thing, the whole entire sum multiplied by 1 by 7. The calculation gives us minus 21196.25 divided by 7, which gives us minus 3028.03571. So, roughly minus 3028. And this is what we are going to take as our S, X, Y. So now we have these values. We have the sample covariance as minus 3028. Sample standard deviation of the Y variable, the number of people is 467.291. And lastly, the sample standard deviation of the X variable, which is 6.621. And thus, our sample correlation coefficient would come out to be minus 3028 divided by 6.621 into 467.291, which then comes out to be roughly minus 0.978. This is a value which is very, very close to minus 1. So, we are saying our sample correlation coefficient r is almost minus 1, which indicates a very strong linear relationship. But while one increases, the other decreases. And this is quite understandable. As the temperature increases, number of people going to the beach will decrease. So that is the interpretation of our result. There is a strong linear relationship, strong correlation between these two variables and while one increases, the other decreases.